What's up guys, Jace Two Cents here, and it feels like lately there's been a bit of an influx in my inbox. An influx in the inbox. I, I, okay, fine, we'll go with it. But there have been a lot of questions lately in my inbox from people doing their very first water cooling loops seeking my advice. So today we're gonna be doing my very first top five video ever on this channel, and that's Jay's top five tips for the water cooling beginner. If it's ultra small form factor with amazing speed and performance that you're after, then ASRock's Desk Mini is definitely for you. Featuring Intel's 7th gen CPUs, 5x5 building block chassis, and the latest M.2 slot technology powered directly by the CPU, allowing for even greater M.2 performance, the Desk Mini packs big performance in a small package. See the link below for more details. Now these are not in any particular order, I couldn't actually rank these, but I sat here and I thought about this for a little bit and I actually took down some notes on things that I think about when I'm doing a water cooling loop, whether you're a beginner or an expert, they're kind of the same thing. So what you're about to hear is in no particular order, but they are kind of where I rank the top five things to think about when it comes to creating your water cooling loop. Fittings are not created equal. I know there's a lot of misconception out there where all, all the fittings are just made in the same Chinese factory and they put a different logo on there and they're all the same. That's not true. Believe me, you don't wanna mess up on this because if you're gonna form a leak, it's gonna happen at your fitting and you get what you pay for. Now, when it comes to compression fittings for soft tubing, they are pretty much similar. It's just a barb with a collar that locks down. As long as you get the correct size tubing in there, it's always gonna be a good fit. It gets a little bit different when you talk about rigid tubing because of the fact that you're dealing with slightly different measurements on there. With 13 millimeter or half inch outer diameter, they're not exactly the same. So you wanna make sure you match up those numbers. But trust me when I say they're not created equal. Every company kind of takes a different approach to the way the O-ring seals around the tube. I personally like to use Primo Chills revolver fittings. I've used them in Skunk Works multiple times. I've used them in the Red Mist build both times. I also used it in the AMD water-cooled build. I just really stand by their fittings. They seem to have the tightest seal and they have, you can tell how good a fitting is grabbing onto a rigid tube by how hard it is to pull the tube out of the fitting when it's locked down. And those always have the greatest grip as far as I'm concerned. Now there's some new fittings out on the market too from Monsoon that claim to be leak free. Okay, well they use the word virtually because obviously nothing is leak free. Any fitting can leak. The most expensive fitting and the cheapest fitting can develop a leak. I mean, there are manufacturer tolerances and defects and anything that's ever been made in the world. So trust me, there's no such thing as a leak free fitting, but we will be taking a look at that in a future video. But remember guys, you get what you pay for. The $4 fittings on eBay might seem really incentive, especially when it comes with the, or when it comes to the rotary fittings, the 90s and the twistable fittings and stuff. Remember, those have seals in there. You get what you pay for, so buyer beware. Just please think about that. If you're gonna spend your money anywhere in your loop, don't cheap out on your fittings. The next topic here is a highly debated one, and that being fans. No, I don't mean you guys, I mean fans, like fans you would put on your radiator. Because now you have static pressure optimized fans, which are fans that can keep a high pressure across resistance, AKA a radiator. Radiator does add a lot of resistance to the airflow of your fan. So if you take an airflow fan or one that's optimized for open flow environment and high CFM, they tend to have low static pressure numbers. And it has to do with the type of fin design on the fan. So if you take something like that and put it on a radiator, you're not gonna maintain as much of an airflow across the fins as you would with something that has a static pressure optimized blade design. Now what you're gonna notice here is if you use an airflow fan on a radiator, what's gonna happen is your system's gonna run fine. But the internet's gonna blow up if you post a picture of your system and everyone's gonna tell you you're doing it wrong. Now ideally you would wanna use a static pressure fan if you have one but they can sometimes tend to be a bit more expensive. Now, there are some fans out there that are fairly inexpensive, like the Yate Loon fans. They're an amazing fan that's kind of in the middle. You can use them for airflow and you can use them for static pressure, and they do an amazing job at working on radiators. In fact, for the longest time, Yate Loon fans were like the budget king of the world when it came to radiators, and they came in different speeds, so you could get various RPM ranges if you wanted them. And they range for about five or six bucks a fan. That's an amazing price compared to 20, 25, or even $30 fans that exist out there. So ignore the internet. If you don't have a lot of money to spend on a static pressure optimized fan, there are options out there that are gonna get you by, and they're only gonna be a couple of degrees at the most difference between temperatures because the size of your radiator kind of matters more than the type of fan that you're using. Just ignore the internet, 
literally, well, except me, I'm, I'm on the internet, but ignore the comments of people that would just be like, you're not using static pressure fans. Guys, I'm not using static pressure fans on Skunk Works for the 560 Rad. They don't make a 140 uh, static pressure fan with the removable rings like I like to use. Corsair, I have no idea why you do that. Don't stress it. Go with the fans that you can afford. Like I recommend Yate Loon, an amazing fan for an inexpensive price. Another topic that creates a lot of confusion amongst beginner water coolers is the idea of conduct, non-conductivity, non-conduct, non-conductive fluids. There you go. On the surface, it sounds like a great idea. Wow, if I generate a leak, nothing's gonna break. It's not gonna destroy anything if I, you know, water or the fluid leaks on my graphics card or my motherboard or whatever. The problem is that's only true for a little while because as the fluid is moving through the loop, it's touching metal and metal has ions. And fluid loves ions. It's like crack to fluid. It wants it. Water wants ions. That's why you've heard of things like deionized water, which is pure, pure water, distilled water, stuff like that. But as the loop is turning and moving and moving and moving, those ions do leach into the fluid, which do raise its conductivity level. Now, it's not ever going to be as conductive as something like tap water, which has tons of mineral, minerals in it and are, is extremely conductive. Water itself inherently is not conductive much. It is the metals and ions and other contaminants in the water that are actually conductive. So non-conductive fluids work for a little while. The problem is they become conductive over time, which is why it's gonna move me into my next tip here is distilled water is still the easiest, simplest, and pretty much the safest way to go when it comes to beginning water cooler loops. Don't go out there and spend 40, 50 bucks on high-end fluids like nano fluids and just pastels and stuff like that if you want to get up and running and you want to do it safely and on the cheap get yourself like distilled water at the grocery store or if you live in a country that doesn't have distilled water deionized water i know there's always options somewhere amazon try that but use but use that add some dyes if you want to change the color and add a few drops of a biocide like pt nuke or something that's going to kill the algae that could grow the benefit to using premixed fluids, if you have the budget for it, is it has in there growth inhibitors so that you don't grow algae or other t sorts of organisms inside your loop. And it has anti-corrosives in there so that you don't start corroding the different types of metals that are in your loop. There's a lot of different metals happening in your loop. And actually, we're going to talk about that next. Wow, I'm, I'm pretty good at this whole segue thing, aren't I? The last tip I want to mention to you is avoid mixing metals where possible. Now it's never going to be possible to have one type of metal. Even if you go with like, wow, I've got an all copper radiator. I've got an all copper water block. The problem is you have different types of fittings in there. You have plated fittings, nickel plated fittings, brass fittings, and you've also got stainless steels and other types of metals in your water pump. And you've got the either the soft fluid or the PETG or the rigid ac acrylic. There's different materials going on in your loop. Now, ideally you would want to avoid aluminum where possible. And that's another huge, debated topic. I'm not, I'm not an alchemist, so I can't tell you about the metallurgy and stuff, but I will tell you that aluminum is tends to be the one that corrodes the worst, especially if you mix aluminum with other metals like copper. So we want to avoid mixing metals where possible. Even if you go with all copper stuff, an all copper radiator and an all copper water block, there are different grades of copper. There's different qualities of copper. There's different types of metals mixed in the copper. So you're never going to get one type of loop. So that's where using something like premixed fluids, kind of touched on in the previous tip, comes in handy is it has an anti-corrosive agent in there which will cause those metals to not start to eat away at each other. Metals are, they're like gangs. They're always fighting. They've got turf, they've got territory, and they just are like, get off my turf, bro, and they start eating each other. You've also got nickel plating, right? If you've got nickel plated blocks, so you're touching nickel plating. Distilled water is the easiest. It's, ten, it's not really going to have any issues with your metals, but for a little extra insurance, and if it makes you have a little bit more peace of mind, which is kind of the hard part to get for beginner water coolers, is always terrified something is going to break in their system, then um, going with some sort of a pre-filled or pre-mixed fluid that has an anti-corrosive in there and an anti-growth agent is going to help with the mixing of metals in your loop. Now, those are the five that I came up with, but obviously there are much more than five tips out there when it comes to water cooling. A lot of you guys that follow me are veterans. So if you think I missed something or you think there was something that was worth being mentioned in this video, bring it up in the comments. Tell me what it is, or better yet, take it over to Twitter and tell me what you think should be included in the next series of five tips for, or next video for five tips for beginning water coolers. This is something we'll kind of keep going and maybe we'll make a playlist over time. So there it is, guys. 
Hope you guys have enjoyed today's video. If you're a beginner, I hope it's helped answer a couple of questions. These are, these are tips I came up with because of the common questions I'm asked, and I think these kind of hit most of those. Anyway, time to go. Thanks for watching, guys, and don't forget, I'm giving away three graphics cards right now. If you guys have no idea what I'm talking about, then you're gonna wanna check this video that just that just slid out right here. Trust me, it's a, it's a big one. We're giving away a 1060, a 1070, and a 1080. You don't wanna miss this, and it's open worldwide. Time to go, good luck, and don't forget to enter.